Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting a new intro. I'm starting to get a little tired of ladies and gentlemen. Lads and lassies kind of makes me feel skeevish, um, as does boys and girls. I feel like I'm at a circus. Guys and dolls I like, I use that one. Males and females, guys and gals, I like that one. Hello guys and gals. And welcome to the recap and review of NCIS season 11 episode 21, Alleged. Why aren't there more episodes like this? This was a fantastic episode. It was heartfelt, it was serious, it was funny, it was dramatic. It was put together very well and acted very well. I was just, oh. And all the characters got their time to shine, except Jimmy. I don't even care, it was such a good episode. The gremlin stays in the dark for another day. So the episode begins and CBS gets in there, don't text and drive, uh, PSA by having a guy run over a dead man. That's like adding insult to injury, just kicking someone when they're down, if you will. The guy was a Navy person who was dead, but the real spotlight of the beginning of this episode is placed on McGee and Tony's juice cleanse. Did I ever tell you guys how much I hate juice cleanses? I think they're stupid. I'm sorry if you are on a juice cleanse right now. Everyone I've ever met who's ever been on a juice cleanse is so agitated and irritated it's like a hibernating bear, and if you set them off, it's like, ah! Please, for the sake of those around you, don't go on a juice cleanse. Bishop eats in front of them, that would be me. I'm so, so bad about that. Like, when people are on a diet, I'm like, are you sure you don't want some of my Chick-fil-A? I'm from some part of the Midwest with this voice. But, um... But then the case relates to a rape case and this and this Navy girl, Holly Farrell, was raped and she refuses to admit it now because she's scared and she's embarrassed. And Gibbs and the woman in charge, I can't remember her name, but she's working Holly's case, they think that the two, the murder and the rape, might be intertwined. So they're working together. Holly thinks that it was one of her shipmates. And so they go on and investigate all the ship people, and it's like, oh, they like have like this one guy that they're really sure is him, but then they're like, no. But in the middle of that, we also get some talk about Delilah, and I didn't even like realize, it didn't sink in that Delilah is going to be gone for a while. Now, McGee and Tony both have women that they love halfway around the world that they won't see for a long time. Better as buddies, as they say. But when they interview Scumzilla, this guy from the bar, they realize that the murder and the rape most likely weren't intertwined. And Abby's in this episode a lot, and she kind of sets the um, girl off, and then the girl kind of just keeps refusing to help, and then Abby convinces her, and eventually they narrow it down. Oh, speaking of Scumzilla, they capture him at the bar, and I was hysterical when that guy called Bishop <laughs> Tony's daughter. I, I've, oh my god, the noise that came out of my mouth, I think, like, awoke some dogs across the street. It was too much. Oh, I think I got, like, a six-pack laughing at that. That was too good. And who brings their daughter to a bar and lets a drunk old man dance with her? I feel like that's something Scumzilla would do. But Scumzilla, they bring him into interrogation, and he's super jerky. Um, I have some few choice words about men of his kind. But we'll just go as jerky. Speaking of jerky, I'll bring that up later. But what happened was the guy at the bar accidentally killed the man who was protecting the girl who was raped. And I love that they did this. I mean, it's so sad and it makes me sad. Um, but I just, usually there's like this thing where you know that the killer is some kind of bad guy. And you're just, you're waiting the entire episode to be like, oh, he's the bad guy. He's the bad guy. He's the bad guy. And in the end, it wasn't really a bad guy. It was a guy in a really sucky situation. He just accidentally killed this man by throwing him out of the bar and it sucks. I, I thought that was a nice twist uh, and we should do stuff like that more often, but not too often because then it would no longer be a twist. However, um, they connect the rape cases and I like hearing from the other girl from the other ship and I thought the way that they figured it out was great. And when that woman put the smack down on that disgusting creature. I was so pleased and I was so happy that Holly Farrell got her happy ending and that scum 
off the bottom of the ocean got to rot in jail being beat up by that woman. Overall, I just really liked the episode. I thought it was so well done. Everything about it, the way it was intertwined, I was worried that like they might even put that sexual assault case on the back burner, which they didn't. They intertwined them so well and everything was split and the humor did not make me feel uncomfortable because I was like, all right, either this episode will have no humor or there will be so much humor that I feel dirty that I'm watching them joke about this. And they didn't. Everything that had humor was within the boundaries, which I appreciated. And it was just well written, well acted. So with that, I will see you guys for the spoilers and theories for NCIS season 11, episode 22. Oh, Shooter! I was like, Shooted? Is that the name of this episode? Do I speak English? I don't know. Goodbye.